we are going to be celebrating the Thomas Mass, so there are stations all around, and um, we'll explain a little bit more about that when we get to it. Um, it's also what we sometimes call Good Shepherd Sunday because we are using the 23rd Psalm. So there's some very familiar parts in our worship for today. Please rise as you are able. The gathering is found on page four, the confession and assurance. Holy God, we thank and praise you for the honor and the privilege of sharing a life-giving message to all the world. We thank and praise you for the task of telling others your news, that Jesus is not dead, but alive. You have entrusted us with this message to all people in all places. We too are characters in the story of your grace. We too share the responsibility to go and tell the good news of Jesus to all people everywhere. Yet, there are some of us who will doubt their capabilities or who will believe that this is a job for someone else. Forgive us, Father, for our fear, our faint-heartedness, our lack of boldness. You send us equipped with your spirit. You put the words in our mouths and the conviction in our hearts. We will go and share the good news that we believe can change the world. The good news of Jesus, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And this is your chance to share with everybody. A wave is fine. Um, if it's someone in your household, you can get a little closer. Totally up to you. Sign of the peace is good. I like to go ahead and talk. I think that's a fun one. It's whatever you choose. Our gathering song is Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. <laughs>
prayer of the day found on the bottom of page six. God of all, you opened your gates wide to receive all of your children into the heavenly kingdom. Help us to be vehicles of promise and proclamation for all who will listen, so that every soul might live in your grace. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as the choir will sing, uh, and we will sing responsibly with the choir, Psalm 23. chapter 13, beginning with the first verse. Barnabas and Saul were sent off to heal and share the good news in the Gentile area of Lystra. They challenged the people there to recognize the divinity of the living God. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, a member of the court of Herod, the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. In Lystra there was a man sitting who could not use his feet and had never walked, for he had been crippled from birth. He listened to Paul as he was speaking, and Paul, looking at him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And the man sprang up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lyconian language, The gods must have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates. He and the crowds wanted to offer sacrifice. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We are mortals, just like you, and we bring you the good news that you should turn from these worthless things to the living God, who made, with, made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed the, all the nations to follow their own ways. Yet he has not left himself without a witness in doing good, giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. Even these words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I'd like to invite my young friends to come forward. I need your brain. We're going to be thinking about something. So there are some <coughs> jobs out there that are really, really respected, and you might say, wow, that's a really great job. Can you name, um, let's say, three or four jobs that you think are really great and you would really respect someone who did that? One, maybe? How about, like, let's start with the easy one. Like, in, sure, let's say pastor, okay? That might be one you might respect. It's just suggesting it. So I wonder if I could impose on a pastor who is present in the church today to let us come to them. I know there are two. We have um, Pastor Fanny Fluckman also visiting with us, and we also have Pastor Phil Anderson. Would one of you let us come visit you real quick? Okay. We're gonna we're gonna go to Pastor Teal. Okay, this is Pastor Teal does a great job. She does an amazing thing. So I thought we could come and pray to her. Ready? Almighty oh, Pastor. Oh wait. Uh, did, no. What? Wait. Why? Why? What do you think? We're supposed to pray to God, but sometimes we want to pray because people do such a good job. Have you ever heard somebody say, "My doctor is so fantastic. He's like the greatest doctor, or she's the greatest doctor," and they almost like are crazy. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard somebody say something like that? Yeah, sometimes we get a little confused, but we're supposed to pray, pray to God and not to people. Um, but does God give people special abilities to do things? Yeah, like what, are, what is something a pastor would do that is a good thing that God would give, a gift that God would give? Yeah, the ability to help people in their congregation. What about, what's something really amazing that God would give a doctor? What could he or she do that God gave them? Life? They can help bring them life. You know, they know enough about how the body works to make sure things, that life stays or is restored. So what? Yeah. What, what's, is there, can you think of any other great jobs out there? Doctors. Yep, doctors are really great. And they can help us feel better. And nurses and all these other staff people. So what happened in the story that we just heard is people said, Paul, Barnabas, you're so great. We're going to start praying to you. And they're like, whoa. Just like you said, we're just people. We're just flesh and blood people. And so we need to always pray to God. What we can do is maybe somebody thinks you're so great. They say, oh, you're so great. You're so great. And you could even say, thank you, but it's something God gave me. Isn't that a nice way to sort of still acknowledge? Because we want to, we don't want to pretend that we're God, and we don't want to take God out of the equation. So we're going to have to make sure we keep God in whenever we appreciate the gifts of people. So that's what we wanted to talk about today. So we're going to say a prayer. Whenever I say it, you say everybody else can join. Ready? Dear God, Dear God, you are the one who gives us gifts. Help us to see that. And give you credit. Amen. So we can find all kinds of ways to But I see you looking at these little places later. This is part of the time tonight. Don't tell anybody. Shh. Okay. Okay. And I was just telling you a story about making sure that the credit goes to the right person. I think that's a really good thing that we always have to do. Make sure you say, we give credit to this person, or we give credit to God. That's so yeah, thank you for sharing. Everybody, I invite you to rise now as we sing our song of the day.
probably hundreds and hundreds of times. And there was this cement pillar thing, and that's how I knew, ah, this is where I turn right, it's where the cement pillar thing is. And this time, after driving by it hundreds of times, I slowed down and I could read some words. There were words on this pillar thing. It turns out it is a monument for the men and women who served in World War II. I was kind of shocked because all of the times I had driven by, I didn't realize that it had any real significance. I admit, when I'm in the car, my primary focus is driving, not reading signs that are on the pillars on the side of the road. But I'm still surprised that I never noticed it until just this past week. Um, and yet it was right in front of me. It was right there. And I didn't realize it. And that makes me think of all of the things that are right in front of us, but we take for granted and we don't really see. There are so many things that we do not notice. Do we stop and look into the sky? Do we appreciate the clouds and the color of the blue sky? Or perhaps, do we appreciate the rain for today? Um, do we appreciate the, the importance of watering the earth? Or when you bite into an apple, do you think about where this plant came from? Do you think that it grew in the ground and that somebody's hand had to pick it and somebody had to deliver it to you to transport it so that you could enjoy its goodness? Or what about when you feel a, the spring breeze, just feeling how nice it is. It's getting, overall it's getting nicer. It's a little iffy, sometimes it's colder than I think it should be. But sometimes we just close your eyes and just feel the breeze. So many times we just go throughout our day without thinking about things, without reflecting on the meaning behind things. I have to say, we changed that just a tiny little bit in COVID, we learned to appreciate some things that we had taken for granted, namely breathing, right? A lot of us ended up with the virus and had a hard time breathing for a time, hopefully just for a short time. And there are others of us who had a hard time breathing through the masks that we knew we needed to wear for the safety of others and ourselves, but we truly learned to appreciate the joy of taking a deep breath of fresh air. Now everything I'm talking about with the, you know, the clouds and sky and the fruits and vegetables that are harvested in the wind and the air, they are all around us and they are all gifts from God who watches over us like a good shepherd watches over the sheep. But sometimes we have to be reminded and to pay attention to those gifts. I have to say I don't know if sheep really appreciate what the shepherd does. They don't send thank you notes or appreciate what you're doing. Thanks for the water. I like the, the green pastures you brought me to. Sometimes we just don't stop and think about it. But our lesson for today in Acts offers us a, an example of how people don't really see or appreciate God who is all around them. Paul and Barnabas found themselves in the city of Lystra, and I had to look that up. That's not a familiar city to me. It's in modern day Turkey. So if you think of just a, a map, and you think of like where Turkey would be and where Rome, Italy would be, you can tell they're not neighbors. They're a little bit far away. So Lystra was pretty far from the capital city of Rome, and they had a harder time understanding some of the Roman things that they needed to, to sign on to as part of the Roman Empire. So they knew about the Roman gods, but they clearly didn't know a whole lot about them. It's sort of a cursory knowledge, an elementary knowledge of of the Roman gods. And when they saw Paul and Barnabas, and they saw that he could heal a man who hadn't walked before, they jumped to the idea like, well, these two must be gods. Let's worship them. And since the guy doing all the talking was Paul, and they knew, oh, I remember that the messenger god who always delivered messages, that was, uh, what was his name, Hermes. So they called him, he must be Hermes. I have no idea, no idea why they thought Barnabas was Zeus. That's the god of thunder. There was no thunder that happened in this story. If they wanted to go with the god of healing, they would have gone with Apollo. Yes, I had to look that up. I did not know that. Um, I will say that some of this was a little more familiar to me since I watched Hades Town when it came into town, and there was a Hermes character. So I'm like, okay, I remember that just a little bit. But Paul had to show them 
that there was so much more than what they knew. The, the very elementary understanding of God's didn't make any sense to him. He showed them the world and he said, see this beautiful sky above you? That was from God. Do you see the ground below you? God made that too. And every living creature of the land or the sea or the air comes from God. It was like me driving by that cement pillar but not noticing what it said. The people hadn't put together that all of creation was by one, by one God. But Paul set them straight by making sure they knew who deserved the credit. It was God who gave the rains from heaven for good crops. And it was God who gave them food. And it was God who gave them joy. Instead of having to remember all of the Roman gods that they were kind of confused about. It. Anyway, Paul offered them a singular God, the living God. The Lystra people almost got it right. At least they stopped. When they saw that there was a healing, they said, something divine is happening. They tried to figure out how to acknowledge the divine in what had happened. They knew that people don't just start walking when they haven't walked their entire lives. And so they said, well, the gods have come down to us in human form. That was partially right. Because that was the message that Paul of Arkham was sharing, that God had to come down in human form. Jesus Christ had come to walk with them to bring healings. They just attributed it to the wrong people. It was not Paul and Barnabas, Paul said. We are mortals just like you. What the mortals, Paul and Barnabas, could do was to share the good news about God through Jesus Christ. And Paul was pointing out all of the signs all around them that they had not seen. And he was challenging them to turn from these worthless gods of Rome and turn to the living God, the God of Abraham and Sarah, who was there the whole time. Paul was reconnecting them to God. Sort of a reminder, like just stopping and saying, that's right, that's, that's the breeze, that's right, that's an apple, that's right, that, those are the clouds, that is the rain. We need to sometimes reconnect with what is all around us. And today is kind of about reconnecting because we are using the Thomas Mass, which is a way of reconnecting as well. Um, I'll just go over parts of it and you can see how they are reconnecting. In the Thomas Mass, we take a break from worship and we invite you to go to various stations throughout the church. We have candles in the back that people will light in honor or memory of somebody. And when you do that, you are reconnecting with those people. You're also reconnecting with an ancient tradition of lighting candles. We also have people coming up to the baptismal font. That's another option during the Thomas Mass. Just dip your finger in the water and make a sign of the cross. You're reconnecting with the promises that were given to you in baptism. Reconnecting with the promise that God is with you always and claims you as a child of God. And for those who come forward, we have individual prayer. And I will have anointing oil also. That's a chance for you to reconnect with the God who heals. Um, and this was by popular demand. We had a, a message about children at one point, And people were kind of excited about coloring. So we have coloring pages for any age and, and crayon. So this is your chance to reconnect with your inner child if that's what you choose to do. So there are all of these different stations where you can come up with healing on the, <coughs> on the farther side. We'll be healing for those who want to grab um, a coloring page. You're welcome to do that. Any age, you have to make that super clear. It's not just for children, anybody at all. The baptismal font and the candles. Those are all ways for us to, to reconnect by stopping and remembering what God has given us and stopping and being grateful for what we have. And so that would be my challenge for you, is to find some time today to just stop and say, thank you, God. Even in our busy lives, it's so easy to rush around without seeing it's so easy to take for granted the gifts of God. It's so easy to see the, the miracles of life as mundane. Recapture your sense of awe and say, thank you, God, for this person in my life. Thank you, God, for this amazing world that you have created. Thank you, God, that I have 
a place to be on a rainy day. God's fingerprints are everywhere, if only we take the time to see them. And so today I urge you to stop and take a beat and reconnect with the source of all things, God. Amen. Um, there are two questions in the bulletin. These are things to reflect on. Um, one is the crowds of St. Paul Barbas could feel because they were gods. How did Paul Barbas respond and help them reconnect with God? And number two, what have you taken for granted? Stop and say and thank God for what you have. And then there's an explanation of the Thomas Mass. Just to, I sort of went over it already, but this is your time. It's a quiet time. If you choose to simply sit where you are, that's fine. Let it be a time of reflection. How often do we get that in our world? Just a time to stop and just think. Um, also, if we, again, the stations, there are on either side, there are stations where you can light a candle in honor or memory of someone, the baptismal font where you can remember your baptism, um, coloring pages for all ages, and then we also have anointing of oils for healing. So let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you. And during this, we have a, um, a wonderful gift of music. Um, it's written in the bulletin, but please note that Eric Stahl is the composer of this piece. Um, and of course, Corey is amazing, and Joanne's amazing. So you might just want to just appreciate that, reconnect with the music. So let the Holy Spirit be the guide.
rise as we are able for the apostles and the visions found on page nine. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For the prayers of intercession, I invite you to make a giant circle. You're welcome to make a circle of prayer. You're always welcome to stay in your view if that's easier for you. After each petition, you will hear God in your mercy, and your response is hear our prayer. United in the hope and joy of resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. The green pastures, still waters, and dark valleys of this earth all belong to you, O Lord. Sustain your creation with a love that is both mighty and just. Where there is destruction, bring healing. Where there is desolation, bring abundance. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You proclaim shepherding love, comfort, and protection for all people and all of creation. Direct leaders to work to learn from your example and instruction. When it is time to complete their work, bless their retirement, especially the retirement of Vicki Whetstone, who leaves Lutheran World Relief this week. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call us up from times of anxiety or depression or suffering. Be with those in need, especially among our friends. Andrew, Carol, Helen, Margo, Glenn, Frankie, Matthew, Barbara, David, Mario. And among our friends, Mary, Susan, Bill, Danielle, Jay and family, Adelbert, Rachel, Ashley, Roger, Mason, Jane, Scott, Jake, Barbara, Eric, Norma, Marcia, Frank, Elijah, Sarah, Walter, Michelle, Florence, Hi, Julie, Jennifer, Gary, Lee, Nancy, Richard, Mary, Tina, Ray, Ron, William, Y.E., Jessica, Julia, Sue, Eric, Ricky, Rick and Denise, Diane, Kristen, Glenda, Bo, and the family and friends of Carolyn. Carolyn Nicholson, and those who remember silently or out loud. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Provide protection for refugees, victims of domestic violence, those who are imprisoned, and all people who are vulnerable to violence and mistreatment. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with those dealing with COVID and those working for justice. Break down barriers that prevent political enemies from working together in places like Myanmar, Belarus, Ethiopia, Israel-Palestine, Church in the Holy Land, Afghanistan, Haiti, Sudan, Iran, and Ukraine. Fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless Baltimore and our online mission field. For our leaders, Joe, Wes, and Brandon, and our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill, and their staff. For those who seek healing through the 12-step programs offered in our coffee house. For our prayer partner, First Lutheran Church in Ewan, Michigan. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for those who have died and now dwell in your house forever. Be with those who mourn and give them hope in the promise of resurrection. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We have some 
offering music today, I just want to call to your attention, we no longer pass the plate. Uh, we have a different way of giving. There, is, there are instructions at the bottom of page 10 about going to the website, texting, um, a place to put an offering in the back, or the address for mailing. And now our offering music.
us your will. He is your word, inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom we take delight. He is your word, sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and we show forth as your son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush all hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection, taking bread and giving thanks to you and came to me. This is my body. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. This cup is the new covenant in Christ's blood. Remembering his death and resurrection, we take this bread and this cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and serve you as your priestly people. Send now your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith and truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and Gathered to one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites us to this holy feast. All are welcome. You don't have to be a member of this congregation. You don't have to be a member. The gifts of God are free. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you. You may be seated. We might be just communing on this one side so that we are away from the heart of the Lord day.
Let us pray together. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. in January of 2024. Um, we've heard before many times that the word synod means walking together, traveling together, so this is an opportunity to actually physically do that. Um, it, uh, the trip is January, the end of January to very early February, 11 days, and some people might want to ask, why would I even want to go to the homeland? Well, I have three answers to that question. Um, one is to see the sites that people for hundreds of, in some places, thousands of years have thought and remembered and given thanks to God, have noticed, as we heard today, notice the places where God has been at work in our lives. Um, there's also an amazing amount of archaeological and historical sites to visit there. And a third reason that I think is just as important as the others is to meet the people who live there, to hear their stories, to see how folks live there in the land that we, we call holy. The other thing that, uh, every conversation I've had about this since we decided that we would um, try to put together the synod trip and that I would be coordinating and inviting people, the question I get all the time is how dangerous is it to be over there? And I would say, um, I've worked with Good Shepherd Travel, who's the travel agency three previous times, and I have never felt unsafe. They will not take you to any place that's dangerous. Most of the troubles are happening in Gaza. We don't go to Gaza. Um, and so I have felt very safe there. And I think uh, it's another way to see what people who live there live with every day. As uh, you've heard, I'm available after worship. I have some brochures with me. Excuse me. I have some brochures with me. I also have some pictures I'd love to show. Um, and please come and ask any questions. But it's a, I think it's a great uh, opportunity for us to meet brothers and sister siblings uh, from around our synod and to meet some new people around the world. Thank you. That's wonderful. Um, I just want to call to your attention to a couple more things from the general insert. We have a lot of people in our church who are so talented, so I just want to call them out. Uh, Son of Psalm is going to be in a dance show starting on Wednesday when I'm going to be there. So if you wanted to come and support her, there's information about getting tickets for that show. Chris Bassett. Some of our members are involved in the Charm City Borough Pen Belmont Conference today. 
today. That's the, the last uh, and the last announcement on that page. So just there's a lot of announcements and we want to support not only what we're doing, but what our community is doing. We can let you know a little bit. And Pastor Katie will be in the um, wonderful, we always have a wonderful fellowship time right after church. I'm not even gonna call it coffee hour, but it's so much fun. It's so much fun. All right, please rise as you are able for the sending. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, open you to see God in your places and people by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending song is Lord, dismiss us with your blessing.